Welcome to this daily devotion for Thursday, December 31st, 2020. Happy New Year's Eve. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox. We invite you into this time so that we can grow closer in love of God and love of neighbor. Hear the invocation as we invite God into this time. In this moment of prayer, let me hear again, O Lord. That it was not I who first chose you, but you who chose me. Save me from all false pride, which might dare lead me to believe that you chose me because of merit. Amen. Our theme this week is chosen by God, and our theme psalm is Psalm 89. We're picking up in verse 19. Once you spoke in a vision to your faithful servants, I placed a crown on a strong man. I raised up someone specifically chosen from the people. I discovered my servant David. I anointed him with my holy oil. My hand will sustain him. Yes, my arm will strengthen him. No enemy will oppress him. No wicked person will make him suffer. I will crush all his foes in front of him. I will strike down all those who hate him. My faithfulness and my loyal love will be with him. He will be strengthened by my name. I will set his hand on the sea. I will set his strong hand on the rivers. He will cry out, You are my Father, my God, the rock of salvation. Yes, I'll make him the one born first. I'll make him the high king of all earth's kings. I will always guard my loyal love towards him. My covenant with him will last forever. Amen. Now for many people in David's time, remember as Pastor Wesley talked about the northern and southern uh, tribes of Israel and uh, the good kings and bad kings throughout the prophets and the exiles and destructions of the kingdoms. A lot of the people really believed that David's line was the one that would last forever. Now, Saul was the first king. The people chose him. And God accepted their decision. But God chose David. And said, these are the promises, part of them, that God made to David. We believe that David's line and his legacy was fulfilled in Jesus. That he has become the heir of all these promises. But we are co-heirs with Christ to those promises. And so as you read this passage again, if you have time today, don't read it as God making a covenant with David, who lived 2,000 years ago. Read it, 3,000 years ago, excuse me. Read it as God making a covenant with you. My faithfulness and my loyal love will be with you. You will be strengthened by my name. You will cry out, you are my father, my God, the rock of salvation. I will guard you with loyal love. My covenant with you will last forever. Our second reading today comes from Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 12. Hear the reading today. After these things, the Lord commissioned 72 others and sent them ahead in pairs to every city and place he was about to go. He said to them, The harvest is bigger than you can imagine but there are few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. Go, be warned though, that I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Carry no wallet, no bag, no sandals. Don't even greet anyone along the way. Whenever you enter a house, first say, may peace be on this house. If anyone there shares God's peace, then your peace will rest on that person. If not, your blessing will return to you. Remain in this house, eating and drinking whatever they set before you, for workers deserve their pay. Don't move from house to house. Whenever you enter a city and its people welcome you, eat what they set before you. Heal the sick. Say to them, God's kingdom has come upon you. 
Whenever you enter city, a city and people don't welcome you, go out in the streets and say, as a complaint against you, we brush off the dust of your city that has collected on our own feet. But know this, God's kingdom has come to you. I assure you that Sodom will be better off on Judgment Day than that city. God bless the reading of this scripture today. We talk about the 12 disciples a lot, but Jesus commissioned many more, 72, to go out in pairs, two by two, to announce the good news and to perform miracles. They actually did work of healing and other miracles. He chose them for a mission. He equipped them for mission and ministry. Here's the good news. He's still doing that. God has chosen you, and you don't have to go alone. You can go in a pair or with your church family to announce the good news, to encourage somebody else, to offer healing to others. Spiritual, emotional, maybe even physical healing. Don't discount what God can do. But he's also equipping you for mission and ministry. That's one of my favorite parts of the Lord's Supper when we gather around the table, something I dearly miss. Part of the gifts, there are some theological things we talk about for communion, but there are benefits, spiritual benefits, and one of them is being equipped for mission and ministry. That God has chosen you and called you out. And we talk about that a lot. We each have a call. God is calling us each to mission, to share the good news, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are all called. But we're never called and then not equipped. Because sometimes we get called and we're like, well, I can't do that. But as we just prayed in our covenant service, sometimes we're called to do things that our interests and inclinations don't match up for. And sometimes we are. Regardless, God is always ready and willing to equip us for what God has chosen us to do. I think that's good news. (laughs) You you may disagree with me. Today's reading is, I found the key to the heart of God by Basilea Schlink. So uh, I apologize. That's not a name I'm familiar with. I'm also hearing things in the background that's distracting me. Oh, my Lord and my God, I scarcely know how to bear the greatness of your glory. Now that Romans 6, 8 has been disclosed to me. Oh God, how great you are. I can only stand in worship before you and rejoice that I am yours. That my old self has been crucified and buried with you. And that it is no longer my ego that lives, usurping your rightful place, but rather you in me. Teach me to reckon with you at all times. And with your power by which you created the heavens and the earth and the waters and subdue them. O Lord Jesus, let me show my gratitude for such a wonderful Lord by spending myself completely for you. Let me only strive to obtain the goal that lies ahead, to be a pillar for you. Let this be my sole aim. May God bless the reading today. Recognizing you are chosen often leads to a a call to responsibility. Uh, Not too long ago, over this last week, we watched Spider-Man again, the uh, first movie with Tobey Maguire. Uh, And that has the very famous line from the original Spider-Man comics from the 40s or 50s. Uncle Ben says to Peter Parker, who becomes Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And so we are chosen, you are chosen, but with that being chosen comes a responsibility that you can choose or not choose. And if you choose it, you really want to dive feet first or head first, depending on, go all in and commit yourself to it. Because when we are fully invested in any relationship, that relationship is better. And the good news is in human relationships, 
Even if we're fully invested, the other person may not be, but God is already fully invested and ready and willing and able to offer you all the things that we talked about this Advent. Hope, peace, joy, love, life, eternal. Today we pray for those who are struggling, which continues to be many. Keep them in your prayers. You may not know them. We have a prayer chain. You can go to umcnl.com and join that. But just pray for those who are struggling. Uh, you know, individuals, yes, who you know, but just as a general blanket prayer, pray for all of those who struggle. We might find ourselves called to them. We might find ourselves moved towards them because they're chosen to. Would you pray with me? Lord, there are many in our world today who are struggling, who are alone, who are in darkness, who are dying, who are despairing, who are depressed, who are anxious, who are afraid, who are angry. We pray for those who struggle. Allow us to speak good news to them, to encourage them that they too may realize that they are chosen, that you love them. And there's nothing they can do about it. We pray this in your holy name, praying the prayer your son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Hear the benediction. And now, my Lord, send me to my duty with confidence in your grace to transform this day's labor into that which is pleasing to you. Friends, until next year, may the peace of Christ be with you all. Goodbye. Goodbye.